host in this land of miracles was Histadrut, a unique labor movement whose members have laid the foundations of this remarkable country. Farmers, factory hands, teachers, doctors, seamen, printers. Name a trade and you'll find it organized in this democratic federation. Even actors and singers like myself. Israel is geared for growth. Its restless people must clear away the neglect of centuries so that a healthy, modern people can flourish in a normal setting. It was a thrilling experience to get a silver-bound Bible right here in the land of Bible, from the hands of Aharon Becker, leader of a million workers. They consider work a blessing here in Israel, a privilege. They live by the high ethics of their prophetic ancestors. At City Hall, May and Amir gave us a bird's eye view of Tel Aviv. Israel's largest city is a mixture of new and old. On its northern limits are new streets with spanking new homes. Conscious of the country's glorious past, they have set up museums like this one, which contains a complete display of glassworks from ancient times. The people of the book have their physical heroes, too. In the olden days, there was David and his slingshot, and Samson with the jawbone of an ass. Nowadays, Israeli athletics are ready for international sporting events. This Olympic-sized Bloomfield Stadium in Jaffa was built by Histadrut in honor of two Montreal friends. The new city links up with ancient Jaffa on the Mediterranean coast. And the tides bring fresh boatloads of Jews to their ancestral soil. My first benefit concert was staged at the magnificent municipal auditorium, and its acoustics were superb. The Tel Aviv audience was a mixture of citizens and tourists. It was a relaxed, big city crowd out for a good time and for a good cause, the International Youth Center in Nazareth, to which all the proceeds were donated. Like that moon getting dim on the rim of the hill in the chill, 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 still of the night. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And good evening to you. Shalom, shalom. <laughs> and l'chaim. <laughs> I'm very pleased to be here. This is my first visit to Israel. And I'm having a wonderful time. It's been very busy with a running back and forth to every city that we can see in nine days. But I'm having a marvelous time. It's educational to me. Uh, I've watched the growth of this nation as everybody has around the world. I'm pleased to see what you've done with it. It's pretty marvelous here. And I congratulate you. And I also congratulate you tonight for coming to see the performance merely because of the reason for the performance. As you know, is to establish uh, areas in Israel, and we're doing it in other countries that might help boys and girls of, of, of young ages uh, give them a better chance. And I thank you for coming and buying the tickets and so on and so forth. And I do thank you.
It's a short distance from Tel Aviv to Nazareth if you count it in miles, but it is centuries away if you count in time. The children and the old folk in this Galilean town almost seem to come out of the pages of the Bible. Here and there, antiquity gives way to the 20th century. The girl with the popsicle has a modern taste, but the ancient head-born pita is still very popular, a staple of the Arab diet. Israel is extremely proud of the progress Nazareth is making. Clean streets, better schools, and modern homes. Histadrut has put up a medical center and convalescent resort homes. These fit in neatly with the great religious shrines. Church of the Annunciation and St. Joseph's are maintained with tender care in this land where religious freedom prevails for all. A mile eastward is a new housing development where thousands of Jewish immigrants make up a twin city. And here I went to Cheda. get curious everywhere, I figure. The center of attraction on May 4th was the cornerstone laying ceremony for the International Youth Center, which Sister Drew has built. Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Arabs and Jews, a bunch of smart looking kids. It was a perfect sunny day full of electric excitement. Mr. Ivan. Mayor Salvi, Your Eminence. Members of the Council of the City of Nazareth and members of the Histadrut and distinguished guests. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Shalom Aleichem. I'd like to thank publicly the members, or in general, the Histadrut and the people of Nazareth. And of course, the people of this young, dynamic, marvelous nation for this great honor bestowed upon me. A nation that's as modern as a moonshot and as old as the Bible. I thank you people for the great honor you bestow upon me because of your belief in me. We swooped down from the mountains of Galilee to the Jordan Valley, but were stopped by a friendly crowd in Tiberias. At Degania, we said hello to the Dean of Pioneers, Joseph Baratz. And across the Sea of Galilee, as dusk fell, we headed for Ein Gev. Hundreds of feet below sea level, we gave our concert. Now this was a different audience. Farmers and fishermen living on the border, tough but kind and gentle. Jerusalem, the holy city, is a divided city. Jordan claims the eastern half, Israel the western. At no man's land, we pass through the Mendelbaum Gate, where international travelers may go from east to west. It is usually quiet here in this zone of peace between Israel and the Arabs, that may one day cover the entire Middle East. School children find Ramat Rachel an excellent observation post, and Jerusalem is right behind them. Ahead is Bethlehem, cradle of Christianity, and another reminder that man should walk in peace with his fellow man. In the dank, narrow streets of the older parts of Jerusalem, kids are on their own playing with the, well, makeshift gear. Sure, they have a good time in their own way, but is that enough? Can they get out of their blind alley? 
In a Jerusalem suburb, Histadrute has a better plan for the youngsters. The Isaac Taylor Community Center is a perfect place for boys and girls to find their way to good citizenship. They can pick out a good book and read it in peace. I do hope that my youth center at Nazareth measures up to this one. A stone's throw away is another Histadrute institution, a hostel for bright kids from the immigrant towns. The older ones attend high school courses they can't find in the remote villages. In this way, they keep up with the big city kids. Fresh air in this mountain area is very good for asthmatic children who live in the Comet dormitories. Sportsmanship comes easy with a good game and clean opposition. And Jewish people are old masters at chess. Basketball courts are new, but Israeli teams are beginning to enter international matches. Next to the people, the Israelis are wild about trees. Millions of little saplings cover the naked hills, and every visitor with a feel for nature in his makeup will plant a sapling. My hosts were kind enough to give me the privilege of setting a tree in their forest in honor of my young daughter, Christina. Grow tall and straight, little tree. Now back in Tel Aviv, we visited one of the 14 Amal schools, a network of vocational training institutions established by the Histadrut. Now the country needs skilled workers urgently. Skilled hands are the passport to do good jobs. But the road to a high school education is not smooth in this small country where the government cannot provide free secondary schools. Teenagers from low-income families need help. Histadrut hands out over 3,000 scholarships a year, but the waiting list is very long. I enjoy talking to some of the young people. Hi there. What's your name? Abraham. Tell me, do you speak English? A little. Where did you learn to speak English? Uh, excuse me? Where did you learn to speak English? In, uh, in school. I noticed some of the other boys here speak English also. Do you think I could ever learn to speak Hebrew? Yes. Now, you look young. How old are you? Uh, Sixteen and a half. Sixteen and a half. What do you want to be? I must be an engineer, an engineer. You obviously have traveled quite a bit. Would you like to go to America? Of course. Do you have any particular reason? Just to see, just to look. What do you think is the most important city in America? Oh, it's hard to know from hearing, I think. Uh, New York must be the biggest one, and Washington perhaps the important one. It's hard to say from so far away. What is your impression of America? I didn't see it. Would you like to? Yes. Which big American city would you visit first? I have a family in Chicago. That's what I like to see first. And after that, I want to visit New York and, you know. Hello. How old are you? 20 years old. Have you always lived in Israel? Yes, I was born here. How long have you been in the Air Force? For uh, two years. Now, in American money, how much do you make a month in the Israeli Air Force? Uh, in uh, American, it's uh, more than six dollars a month. The young people of Israel will help shape the coming half century. And I, for one, want to see them attain the know-how and the skills that they need. A man who knew the worth of science and knowledge was Professor Chaim Weizmann, first president of the State of Israel, who now rests in peace at Rehovot at the scientific center bearing his name. Scientists and statesmen, Chaim Weizmann blended learning with leadership to win a place in the hearts of his countrymen. Down the highway, screened by a green curtain, is the charming Kaplan Hospital, one of 16 maintained by Histadrut. This unusual organization is quite a thing. Your union card gives you the best medical care in the world. And even without belonging to Histadrut, hundreds of thousands of immigrants get this fine service. 
In fact, two-thirds of Israel is covered by Kupat Halim. This accounts for the healthy babies and low death rate. If you have to get sick, Israel is a place for it. Now, many visitors from newly emerging nations of Africa and Asia come to study the new society of Israel. It will help them solve similar problems back home. Toward the end of my tour, I was scheduled to perform at Tel Nof, the, the Air Force Base. Would never bend when things go wrong, a man ain't got a friend without a song. That field of corn would never see a plow. That field of corn would be deserted now. A man is born, he's no good no how without a song. My trouble and woe, but sure as I know, the Jordan will roll, and I'll get along as long as a song strung in my soul. I'll never know what makes that grass so tall. I'll never know what makes the rain to fall. I only know there ain't no love at all without a song. I forgot to my trouble and woe, but sure as I know, the Jordan will roll. And I'll get along as long as a song strung in my soul. I'll never know what makes that rain to fall. I'll never know what can make that grass so tall. I only know there ain't no love at all without a hits you the minute you see its uniform men and women. Hard as steel in combat, these fellows are gentle when in civilian times. Only yesterday they were on the run, fleeing Nazis and other enemies, and now they stand firmly rooted in a soil they revived through their sweat and blood.
day, they hold open the gates to the oppressed Jews of many lands and to adventurous spirits from the free world who wish to join in the task half finished. With one hand, the people of Israel protect their hearths and homes, and with the other, they build a better society. Only 14 years old on this Independence Day, Israel has a long way to go. In the spirit of human brotherhood, we Americans salute the pioneers of Israel, steadfast and strong. Friends, what happens to Israel tomorrow depends upon what we do for its children today. The Israel Histadrut campaign is a major agency that opens the gates of opportunity for the thousands of boys and girls. And you and I can help by giving our fullest support to this great cause. Shalom, shalom.